Today is February 2nd, 2020. You guys know what that means, right? Super Bowl Sunday. Not a lot of options for poker around here, as you can see. And the reason is, this is Claremont, California, a small suburban city that I've been a huge fan of for a long time, and actually would like to live here one day if everything goes right. Obviously, no poker around here, but the reason that I stopped here is I figured it'd be a good place to start off the vlog, uh, since it's between my house and Morongo. So I'm actually on the way right now. Speaking of Morongo, the reason I'll be playing here today, of all places, is because they're having splash pots for the game, but they're gonna double from how big they usually are. So a field goal is $50, a touchdown is $100, and if there's any safeties, which hopefully there's at least one, that's $200, and these are per table. So a lot of money being splashed around, and hopefully a lot of action to be found as well. I figured it'd be a fun day to play poker, and of course, bring you guys along for the ride. One thing I wanted to touch on before getting into that though is there's like a sense of pressure almost for me personally to perform really well on big days like this or like, um, I don't know, any sort of holiday or special event where I feel like the poker is gonna be good. And I think that's a mistake because you're not really in that much control, at least in poker when it comes to short term results. It's kind of just up to variance and not making huge blunders. So that's what I'm gonna focus on today is just kind of letting the game come to me. In 10 minutes or so, you guys will know whether or not that was actually the case, but that's kind of the mindset going into it today. I have one more announcement to make, but I'm actually gonna save that until after the poker because I wanna get going here. It's already nine or 10 a.m. and I feel like the lists are already getting slammed, so. Let's head over to Morongo and see how things go. Alright, so jumping straight into the action today, I buy in for $500 playing 2-5 no limit and within the first 5 minutes I get dealt a beautiful looking hand from under the gun, King Jack of Hearts, I think it's good enough for a raise so I make it $20 and get no less than 5 callers. So a bunch of people going to this flop which comes down King 8-3 rainbow. All things considered, a pretty great flop. We should be ahead of pretty much all holdings here, except for maybe pocket eights and pocket threes. So when the action checks to me, I'm just gonna bet for value. Even though it's multi-way, no need to go too large here since the board is fairly dry, so I just make it $60. But surprisingly, when the action folds to a player in middle position, he shoves all in for $180 total. This is kind of weird because on a board like this, he shouldn't really have any raises whatsoever, I think. Doesn't really make sense for him to do so with sets because I imagine they'd want to slow play. And he really shouldn't have any strong kings here. Ace king, I expect, would raise before the flop. So aside from maybe king queen, we should be ahead of all his top pair hands as well. So when the action gets back to me, I don't think it's really that much of a decision. I make the call fairly quickly. Turn card is a 10, which isn't that great since now we lose to King 10 as well. And the river's a brick. Unfortunately, this time my opponent announces King Queen, which obviously we cannot beat. So King Jack does not work out this time. Not really the start of dreams, but we only lose around $200 in this hand. So I guess it could have been worse. 
In the next hand, action folds to me on the button. I look down at Queen Jack offsuit and raise it up to $15 and get called by just the small blind. So heads up in position to a flop of ace 10 queen. He checks it to me and on a board like this, I think it's totally fine to put out a bet here. Even though we just have middle pair with a gut shot, it's such an advantageous board for the pre-flop raiser that I certainly don't think betting's a mistake, but I decided to check it back with some showdown value and see what he does. Turn cards the six of diamonds and he puts out a bet of $25. After checking back the flop, certainly not folding middle pair just yet, so we go heads up to a river, which is an interesting card. It's an offsuit 10. This time the small blind slows down and checks it over to me. And I actually think for a little while on what to do here because I'm not sure if we need to turn this hand into a bluff. After some deliberation, I decide that it's probably strong enough to win at showdown more often than not. And even if my opponent did have an ace in this spot, I don't expect him to fold it on a river board pair since now his kicker isn't playing anymore. So I just check back and luckily we beat Jack nine suited. As if splash pot day wasn't interesting enough already, my table decided to also do bomb pots every dealer change. What that means is everyone throws in a predetermined amount, this time it was $20, and we go straight to a flop. So in this hand, we get dealt 8-9 offsuit with $180 already in the middle. The board comes down ace-10-9 with two clubs, so we just flop bottom pair and I guess a very optimistic backdoor straight draw. Action checks to me. I don't think I'm going to be betting here into eight people, so I check it. And then a player on my left bets $60. There's two callers from early position. And when the action gets back to me, I think it's a close spot because given how big the pot already is, we're almost getting direct odds to hit two pairs or trips or whatever. The problem is, I'm not even sure if turning an 8 would be good or bad for me. So aside from a 9, I would really feel unsure about where I stand in the hand. So I decided to just try to play solid and let this one go. Not looking to get involved in a bomb pot with just bottom pair, even though I am getting a fairly good price. Given all that ranting, I'm guessing you guys can guess what the turn card was, right? Yep. Offsuit 9. This time though, an early position player who just check called the flop decides to move in for I think it was like two or three hundred bucks. The player on my left shows queen 10 for middle pair and folds it. And then the guy who went all in shows down a queen high bluff. What a beautiful thing these bomb pots are. Like you just end up seeing the craziest things. And if the guy on my left doesn't bet middle pair on the flop, we probably take this one down, but I don't hate his bet, I guess. After everyone checks to him, it doesn't seem like anyone has a better hand than middle pair, so I don't know. I think it's close, but obviously I wish he hadn't bet. At this point in the session, I get a bunch of playable hands, but unfortunately, zero connection with all of them. And you guys know how that goes. You put money in with these beautiful looking cards and then eventually end up folding. It's gonna add up. So I add on some more chips and end up not really finding any interesting spots until a new dealer sits down. What does that mean? Well, another bomb pot. However, we end up getting dealt 4-3 off suit so not too hopeful until the flop comes down 4-4 four, four, deuce with two spades. I'm in the small blind, so with straight draws and flush draws available and also over pairs, I decide to bet out and get value from all those sorts of holdings. Unfortunately though, even though I only bet around half pot, action ends up folding all the way to the cutoff, who ends up moving all in, but it's only around $80 at this point. The button folds, so we're heads up against an unknown hand. Turn cards the five of hearts, river is the queen of hearts, and three fours ends up being the winner. So we get to take down a bomb pot. Forget playing all those nice looking cards. Just give me some bomb pots and I'll try to figure something out. Like flopping trips. 
Shortly after that hand, I move over to the main game and pretty soon after pick up ace jack of clubs in a $100 splash pot. Obviously a great time to pick up a strong holding so when there's two limpers I raise it up to $100 from middle position. Just a casual 2-5 open here at Morongo. Action folds to the first limper who makes the call and the second limper folds. So heads up in position to a flop of king 10-6 with two hearts and one spade. So we have one over and an inside straight draw, but aside from that, not really a great flop. So when he checks it to me, I'm just gonna check it back and evaluate the turn. I think we could often still have the best hand even though we completely missed. So when the turn card's the 10 of diamonds, I think if we were ahead on the flop, we're still ahead here on the turn. But he puts out a bet of $150 this time. I have some minor history with this player, and every time he's had a strong holding, he usually pots it or ends up overbet jamming all in. So considering that the pot is fairly big now and this is a relatively small bet compared to the size of the pot, I think he could be doing this with some draws some bluffs and maybe some small pocket pairs that he's not sure what to do with he has around 400 dollars behind this 150 dollars bet i give it some thought and actually end up deciding that an all-in here would not be that terrible because if he does have some sort of straight draw or flush draw we get the money in as a slight favorite and if he does have a small pocket pair, I feel like he'll be folding a lot since we can still have a lot of strong holdings on this board even after checking back the flop. I'm not really expecting to fold out strong hands here like top pair, but like I said, I think this player could have a lot of different things here given how the hands played out. So I cross my fingers and move all in and luckily we don't get snap called which is always great when you're running a marginal play. Eventually, he actually ends up folding, so I'm more than happy with that result given that we were probably not ahead, at least not by much, no matter what he had. Anyway, happy to take down the first touchdown splash pot of the day. In the next hand, the player on my right limps in from under the gun, and I look down at ace-queen offsuit next to act. I raise it to $25, the cutoff makes the call, and the under the gun limper makes the call as well. So three ways here to a flop of four, deuce, deuce, rainbow. Player on my right checks, I think it's certainly fine to bet here since we'll often have the best hand but could use some equity protection. But this time I decide to check it because the under the gun player had shown a tendency to bet a little too often when he sensed weakness so i decided to lay the trap here a little bit and also just see what the cutoff does cutoff checks it back though so we're still three ways to a turn here which is the nine of clubs as expected the player on my right puts out a bet 25 dollars pretty good price here could often still have the best hand and even if we don't we could always river a pair and go for some value so I decide to call and see what happens. I don't think it's really that great since there's still a player left to act behind us, but I don't think the cutoff will improve too often on this turn card, so I don't really see what hands she could continue with here that don't bet the flop, so I don't think it's that bad. Anyway, the cutoff does end up folding, so we go heads up to a river card, which is a queen. So we end up with what is very likely the best hand here. I don't expect my opponent to bet here too often unless it's a very strong hand. So when he puts out a bet of $85, even though I expect to have the best hand the majority of the time, I'm not sure what worse hands we can get value from here. So I don't think a raise is actually the best play. Maybe against some smaller sizing I can get behind it, but against this size in particular, I decide to just call and we end up beating 10-9 offsuit. Questionable whether or not he would have called a raise there. I guess we'll never know, but happy to take it down. There's been a lot of close decisions this session. So when I look down at pocket aces in the small blind, it's a wave of relief because this hand is much more simple to play than some others. There's a small moment of sadness when it folds all the way to the button but luckily, he limps in. So it looks like it won't be a chop after all. I raise it to $25. 
the big blind folds and the button makes the call. So heads up out of position to a flop of queen eight five rainbow. I put in a C bet of $30 and my opponent, a bit surprisingly, raises it up to $100. This guy in particular had been a very interesting player so far. So I think you can deviate from a standard play here and raise again. Just based on the fact that if he has top pair, I expect him to go with it based on what I've seen so far tonight. However, because the board is so dry, I don't mind giving him a little bit of rope. He has around 500 behind, so if somehow I were to raise and give him a chance to fold a hand like King Queen or Queen Jack, Queen 10, hands of that sort, it would be a disaster. So I decided to proceed with a call and probably check raise most turn cards. When the turn comes to 9 of diamonds, that's definitely one that qualifies for a check raise. I think a lot of his top pair holdings will pick up a straight draw here, maybe even a flush draw, who knows. So I proceed with the plan of checking it over to him. He obliges with a bet of $120 and he'll only have around $475 after this bet. So not looking to check call the turn here. Definitely want to get all the money in and get value from all those previously mentioned holdings. So that's what I do. I move in for $500, but we get snap called, which isn't really a good sign. I expected at least some hesitation before the money went in. My opponent quickly gives me an explanation for the speed of his call by flipping over queen nine offsuit. So what looked like a turn card that was gonna get us a lot of action, well, I guess it did get us a lot of action, but not the type of action I was looking for. Pocket aces going down in flames. Nice hand, sir. Despite losing that big pot with aces, I find some small comfort in the fact that one of the end seats opens up now. So I get to move over there, which gives you guys a better camera angle. See, it's not all bad news. In fact, it's even better when we look down at ace jack of diamonds. There's a limp from early position. In fact, it's my friend from the previous hand with queen nine. I'm gonna raise it up here and try to play in position. I make it $25 and everyone folds except for him. So heads up to a flop of ace king four with two diamonds. Jeez, okay, uh, he checks it to me and I think I make a mistake here actually. I checked it back thinking I blocked so much of what my opponent can continue with here. I think I should just be betting here anyway, even if it's for a small sizing. Not a huge deal, but just something that I noticed later when looking back at the notes. Turn card right away gives us the nuts in the seven of diamonds. Even better is that my opponent puts out a bet of $30. I'm gonna raise it up here, so I make it $85, and he pretty quickly makes the call. So we got some action here. River is the jack of hearts, so we improve from a flush to two pair. I mean, I'm just kidding, but seriously, we have pretty much everything on this board. He checks it to me and I put out a value bet of 160, though I'm not even sure what hands I'm targeting. I'm honestly just betting because I have a strong hand. I have no idea what my opponent has here and I'll actually never know because he ends up making the fold. The very next shuffle is another $100 splash pot for a touchdown and I look down at king 10 of spades from early position. I open it up to $75 and then the player on my left moves all in for a little bit over 200. Action folds all the way to the player in the big blind now who is the same player from the last two hands who I played against and he decides he's had enough and also moves all in for around the same. I think it was 215 to be exact. So when the action gets back to me, I think it's a pretty crystal clear call. We're getting such a good price with R75 plus each of these players $200 and on top of that, the $100 dead in there from the splash pot. So I don't take too long before making the call. It's the weird thing about poker, you can expect to lose and still profitably put money in the pot. Pot odds are a weird thing, man. Anyway, we're off three ways here to try to make some sort of hand. Unfortunately, in theme with how today's been going, we don't really make anything and end up losing versus pocket queens from the player on my left. I announced king high though, and the player in the big blind said that that was good, which I thought was kind of funny, but lose a little over 200 in this one. 
but I'm not too mad about it. Actually, even if the player on my left had shown me the pocket queens before I got to make a decision, I'd still call because we're getting the right odds to compete against that hand. Just didn't work out this time. All right, in the last hand we'll go over today, there's an under the gun open to $15. A player makes the call behind him, and I look down at King Jack offsuit on the button. We're in position, we're playing shorthanded, and also the player in early position had some pretty obvious sizing tells where $15 was a weak hand, 20 was average, and 25 was strong. So since he only made it 15 this time, and we have removal to strong hands, I think it's a good candidate to put in a 3-bet with. So I make it $65, and only the under the gun player makes the call. He only has about $200 in his stack, so not a lot to play for. Luckily, the flop comes down jack 9 8, so we end up making top pair, which I deem to be the best hand the majority of the time. When he checks it to me, having top pair here, normally you'd want to bet a bit smaller since you block a lot of hands that your opponent can continue with. But because the board is so dynamic with so many draws available, I decided to try to get all the money in now since I feel like he's going to connect with this a lot, but we're still going to have the best hand. So I figure let's get it while the getting is good. I move all in for his last 220, I think it was, and he pretty quickly makes the call with ace 10. So we're in good shape here to find a big pot coming our way. However, the ace of diamonds on the turn is going to shut that down. And an offsuit four on the river just seals the deal. We end up losing the last pot of the night. And after battling for around eight hours, I decided to just call it a day. It'd been a pretty tough session. There was, like I said, a lot of closed decisions. Sometimes in poker, you have those days where every decision is so easy and crystal clear. And today kind of felt like the opposite. So that's pretty normal. There's gonna be days like these. I just wish it hadn't been on Super Bowl Sunday, but oh well. Always happy to bring you guys along for the journey, and I hope you guys enjoyed the hands. Pro tip, nothing heals a losing session better than a late night snack. And what better place to do it than the world's best convenience store, 7-Eleven. Yeah, so things didn't end up going as great as I'd imagined they would. Ended up losing, I think like around 400 or maybe a bit more in like an eight hour day. So obviously could have gone better could have ran a little better in some spots, could have played better, I'm sure. But right now I don't feel like thinking about all those hands. I just want like a blueberry muffin with an iced coffee. I owe you guys an announcement though, because in case you forgot, at the beginning of this video, I said there's something I wanted to talk. I'm making an impromptu visit to Las Vegas this week. I'll be there Tuesday through Friday. So four days, three nights, with my beautiful girlfriend, we decided to just make a random getaway. We were both getting like kind of burned out with the usual grind. And so we decided on Vegas. I won't be playing a lot of poker, but I will be playing one day for sure, during which I'll be making a vlog. And that's gonna be Wednesday at the Win slash Encore Poker Room. I'm not sure if I'll be playing 1-3 or 2-5 yet, still to be decided, but if you guys want to say hi, grab a beer, and maybe exchange some chips, that would be a good time to do it if you guys are from the Las Vegas area. So, next time you see me, it will be a Vegas vlog. Those are always fun. And uh, yeah, subscribe if you're interested in checking that one out. And that's it. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you for all the support. Thank you if you gave this video a thumbs up. It really helps me out. All right, I'll see you guys next time. Until then, good luck at the tables. Peace.